Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube, and today is going to be another diamond paint with me. <laughs> my mind went blank for a second. I just got up. While I work on Diamond Art Club Sweet Tooth by Michael Jolina, I'm really starting to feel my groove in with this piece. Now that I'm on like the second row, the colors are amazingly gorgeous in this piece. A couple of you have gotten this kit recently and oh my God, the colors. That's why, first of all, candy. I don't eat candy anymore, but I love candy. And I mean, she's like wearing a ring pop. I mean, are you kidding me? Like the lollipop, seriously. And yeah, just the colors, gorge, totally. Okay, using a new pen today, not new, but one that I've had, I have quite the collection of pens. Um, this is from Lass and Lathe Works, and is that not like, I don't even remember the name of it, but holy hell, it's so gorgeous. Purple, of course. Isn't that like the biggest straightener you've ever seen? <laughs> I had a bunch of them, and I'm like, it looks weird. Like, I didn't have one in there, because when I go to put it in my holder, I stick, I stick this in the silicone part, so I need, I can't have this. And so I had it out, and it just looks so weird. I'm like, it needs a straightener or a multi-placer. I don't use multi-placers. We know this, if you're veterans of the channel. Um, and yeah, by the way, Friday, and I this almost passed me by because in the hubbub of you know, the past couple days, Jesus. Um, but in the hubbub of just regular life, I almost missed my YouTube anniversary. So it is July 16th. So that's Friday. Friday is my five year anniversary on YouTube. That's a huge milestone, right? And just to touch on what had been happening on my channel the past couple days, I'm not gonna keep talking about it because after yesterday, yeah. But I did email YouTube and ask them, I explained the situation and what happened and if there was any way they were able to retrieve my deleted videos off of their server and put them back on my channel. I don't know how that works. Um, when you go to delete a video, it does say on there, you know, this is permanent, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's so they don't get a bunch of people emailing them and saying, hey, can you restore my videos? But I'm hoping since it's only been like two days, I don't know how long it will take them to get back to me. Um, I don't have any expectation that I'm gonna be able to get those videos back. So what I've started to do is I've started, when I am sitting downstairs and I'm not in front of my computer, I will send, and even when I'm in front of my computer, I do it. I will send myself an email, like if I have a note to tell myself or a reminder. So I have started to send myself, first of all, I've started to take notes for my next cross stitch video because I kind of want to keep the diamond painting and cross stitch separate. So I'm probably not going to be talking about cross stitch in these videos, right? I'm going to kind of try to separate it so you guys look forward to cross stitch videos because I'm going to start doing some more cross stitch updates for sure. Um, last night though, I will say I went a little bit cuckoo crazy on one, two, three stitch and bought a bunch of patterns. <laughs> so that will be upcoming. I will be showing you guys those and all of that. It'll be like my old floss tube videos. You know, for the long, for the first two years of my channel, the videos I did were like the one you saw yesterday in front of my computer with my tripod up there. It, yeah, it was like bare bones. People just want to see your face, I think. And that's what my husband thinks. So I almost put that in the wrong symbol. Um, so yeah, uh, look forward to that. So I've started to take, I've started like an email thread for myself, like notes for cross next cross stitch video. Because when Jill and I first started our channel, I had a notepad and I was writing down like furiously, like, oh my God, I had so many videos in the beginning, which you can still see. Those are still up there. 
Um, but I also have started to make a list of what diamond painting videos I want to recreate. Yes, it is sad that I've lost about 200 true crime videos. That's okay. There's no shortage of true crime out there. Let me fucking tell you. There is no shortage. So I could go for like another 20 years and do a true crime every day. <sighs> coffee. I've gotten used to drinking coffee practically black now because I only put one tablespoon of half and half in it. That's pretty much black. Um, but I stepped on the scale today and I was 174.4. Let's fucking go, motherfucker! Let's go! <laughs> yeah, that will mean tomorrow's weigh-in day. Um, if I can get to 174.2, I will have lost three pounds this week. Let's fucking go. I put on, see, Kohl's, I bought, like, every color of those, like, cargo pants, capris, that they had. They had like five colors. I bought all five because I really love those pants. And I have them all in a 12 now. Um, I put on a pair of the 12s yesterday that I hadn't ever worn. It was like a dusty blue color. They were like giant. I'm like, how can the size across the board be that different? And I'm like, I haven't been losing that much weight where all of a sudden the 12s are now too big. I literally cannot start. I can't. I can't keep buying clothes like that because I was like, okay, well, today I'm going to find out because I'm going to put on another pair that I've had for a while that are 12s. I was just like, it was weird. But yeah, I really love those pants. So, because I don't wear shorts in the summer and those are nice for summer, like, they're thin. They go down to, they're like above my ankle. So they're not uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like if things are too short, you're yanking at it or whatever. No, these are fucking fantastic from Kohl's. But yeah, I have started. So two videos that I'm going to, I know I'm going to recreate because some of you have asked for it. What is an AB diamond? I'm pretty sure that's one video that got deleted. Someone just asked me an AB diamond question today. And then um, my drafting table setup, because that has changed since I started diamond painting. So like I said, maybe this is not such a horribly, totally bad thing that those videos are gone because now I can update the videos. Do you know what I mean? Like refresh it. Um, and I have to say, I'm, I'm not sad to see, like, all of the square diamond painting unboxings from, like, way in the beginning go away. Because I sometimes would have nasty comments where people are like, did you ever complete this? Why would you unbox this if you're not even going to complete it? Are you fucking kidding me? But, yeah. As my new favorite saying is, you can fuck all the way off. <laughs> Many of you liked that. Many of you liked that, and you're welcome to use it. Yeah. Um, I have to thank Shay. Shay is one of my subscribers and she had sent a comment and said, see, I don't see every comment. And first of all, there are some comments that are held as potential like spam. And that person's original comment was held as spam. And so I didn't see it. And it made me go look comments held for review. And she had alerted me and said, you know, there are some people in the comments like saying some weird things about how you're lying. And I'm like, what? Oh God. Thank God my work day was done yesterday when I went and saw that because I immediately, that's, I, as soon as I read it and put the community post, I went and did the video. I put on the, put, click the camera right on. Yeah. Um, so essentially I had four videos yesterday. <laughs> oh, I told my, now I told my husband when he came in from work, I had three videos. He's like, my God, when did your job end? I said, well, let me, let me backtrack. I did two of those videos before work even started. And thank you so much to everyone who has commented and watched the vanity video. Isn't it so fantastic? Like I used it for the first time yesterday. Love it. Love it. 
So I have some new makeup coming because I just love makeup so much. And um, some of it should be here today, so that's exciting. Yeah, still trying to find that perfect formula of what to do on my face. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos about it. And I've started, I bought some really good like eyeliner brushes. And I've started to use on my top lid because I was starting to feel like my liquid liner. Not that I'll never use liquid liner again. But I was starting to feel like my liquid liner, it was becoming, it was looking too harsh on my face. So... I've started to use black eyeshadow as my eyeliner and it looks a bit softer. I need to figure out how to do it where the line is not so thick. Um, but I like smoky eye, so it worked. That's what I had yesterday and a bunch of you commented on my makeup yesterday, so thank you. But yeah, I can't believe, you know, today is Wednesday, so next Wednesday is my hair appointment. I can't wait! I really love my hairstylist and I really hope she does a good job on highlights and dyeing hair and stuff from what I can see on the Facebook page. So I really am confident and hopeful that she can recreate that look that I have because, man, it will be the first time in my entire life that I have had professional ombre highlights like that kind of thing um i've never had that and whatever she's gonna have to do to my hair i'm just hoping it my hair doesn't become too damaged like she has resources for that because i don't know how she's gonna get out the color the current color of my hair without stripping it of some sort so i'm gonna be there a while <laughs> and my appointment's at 5 30 so I know I'm probably her last appointment. But yeah, looking forward to it. Um, the, hair, the hair place that I go was the place where my aunt worked. My aunt who passed away five years ago now. Um, she worked there. So my hairstylist knows my aunt, knew about my grandparents um, when each of them passed and all of that. Now, I haven't been back to her since my grandmother passed. So that'll probably be something we'll touch on. Because the last time I saw her was um, the end of January when I got my hair cut and I got a cut. I got a cut too short. So I'm going to be very careful in saying, oh, I'm letting it grow. Please just like, just like, you know, freshen up the layers. But don't like cut my bangs or any of that nonsense. Nah. So next Wednesday. We, and I don't, I don't, I'm trying not to jinx this. I'm just trying to have faith that this may come to fruition. So we don't have any, we're not on the calendar tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. I don't, not quite sure how that happened because we've been on the calendar all five days. Now I'm fully prepared to work tomorrow and Friday. Like stuff's going to come in because that, um, happens all the time. However, Bill is supposed to go on a fishing trip with our neighbor tomorrow night, Friday, Saturday, coming home Sunday. Wouldn't it be awesome if I had off on Friday? Yes, it would. Yes, indeedy, it would. And it's so funny because I asked him last night, I said, well, you know, if you go on this trip, when are you leaving? He's like, don't get too excited. <laughs> He's like, I know you're so happy that I'm going on this trip. He said, and he had me laughing so hard with how he was like acting like me. It was so funny. I said, well, I can do some videos. I can work out, you know, I can have, yeah, have like a weekend. I'll be glad when he comes home on Sunday. I miss him by Sunday. But we haven't been apart like that. Like, neither of us have gone anywhere without the other. My God, since 2019? Yeah! Yeah. So, 
I don't know if he's going. I don't have any expectation because our neighbor hasn't like totally confirmed it. But considering today is Wednesday, I'm guessing I'm going to know here pretty soon. Yeah. So we watched the second episode of Big Brother last night. It should be a very interesting season for Big Brother. And we watched Hell's Kitchen. Um, we still have this week's Bachelorette to watch. My stepdaughter was over for dinner yesterday, and she doesn't really care for the Bachelorette this season, so Bill and I will watch that tonight. Or at least start watching it, because it's like a two-hour show, so we normally cannot fit all of the show in when we have dinner. There's a stray A right there. I'm almost done the A's. That's the one thing about this piece is for a lot of the sections, especially her hair, lots of colors. So you're, it's lots and lots and lots. I mean, there are 33 colors in this piece and I feel like all 33 are right in here. <laughs> okay, so yesterday I did have some people buy me some coffee. So very much appreciated. Thank you so, so very much. Vicki bought me three coffees, and she says, still enjoying your channel. Thanks. Thank you very much, Vicki. And then Kelly Jackson bought me five coffees, and she says, hey, lovely, I think you need this coffee. Pity I can't buy you something stronger. I almost had a glass of wine last night. We have, like, wine. Our table in our kitchen is like a wine rack underneath of it, and I have, like, five bottles, but I really, really try to not drink very much alcohol because it throws off my weight loss efforts. You know what I mean? So if I could get through the past couple days with no wine, I'm good. Yeah. She said, you did the right thing and protected yourself and possibly your color street rep from repercussions. Hope you have a great day. Love you. Kelly, thank you so much. And, you know, I even had people comment on my video that... I knew we're probably still subscribers, but hadn't watched anything in a long time. So just thank you to everyone. The outpouring of support yesterday was overwhelming and awesome. So thank you so much for having my back, basically, right? All right. So I read a little bit more of my book last night. I'm, st I'm almost done. I only have like 40 pages. I'm on 288 of 314. B.A. Paris's book came out yesterday. Let me read you the premise. Her book is called, the new book is called The Therapist. And I forgot I had pre-ordered it back when, so I automatically bought it. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to read that one next. After this one, after the Carol Goodman book. So here is the premise. When Alice and Leo move into a newly renovated house in the Circle, a gated community of exclusive houses, it is everything they've dreamed of, but appearances can be deceptive. As Alice is getting to know her neighbor, she discovers a devastating secret about her new home and begins to feel a strong connection with Nina, the therapist who lived there before. Ooh. Alice becomes, becomes obsessed with trying to piece together what happened two years before, but no one wants to talk about it. Her neighbors are keeping secrets, and things are not as perfect as they seem. It's almost like, that reminds me of the book I read called The Girl Before, I think. Jill had told me about that book, and I read that years ago. It's so good. Now, people have asked me, like, you know, book recommendations, all of that. In the link tree link in the description box is a link to my Goodreads profile. Every single book I have read is on there. Please friend me. F try to send me a friend request on there because I go on there and I check it once a day to accept people. That way you can see all the books I've ever read. Instead of me trying to go through and you know, because I'm very careful now about what links I put in places. Um, yeah. So go follow me on Goodreads. Goodreads is like Facebook, but for just book people. Um, it's fantastic. Um, I love having a record of my books and that's where I do my reading challenge. You can do a reading challenge for yourself of how many books you want to read in a year. I have set my goal at 50 and I think I'm on book. Let's glance at it right now. I'm going to tell you. 
I have read 25 books, so I'm halfway there. So I am, I'm one book behind schedule, it says. <laughs> so I am on my 26th book right now. So it may come down to it at the end. If I can read, like if I can get done this Carol Goodman book and then start another one, you know what I mean? Um, I can easily catch up with one book. I mean, I was gangbusters there for a while. Okay. I have jibby jabbed your ear off. Today's story is Christ Christiana Edmonds. So this is an old one, 1871. We love the old stories. Oh, last night, before I get into this, last night what I watched, I didn't watch a movie. I was going to watch the third Fear Street movie, but decided not to. After my cross-stitch perusal of a bunch of websites, it was like 10 o'clock. So I watched um, Bailey, one of Bailey Sarian's true crime videos. I love her. And man, is she a gorgeous woman, right? She knows how to put on some makeup. I have one more of her true crime there's a whole bunch that I haven't watched because I just discovered her channel not that long ago. But I like that she cusses and she she has like the same thoughts as me. Like when I comment on true crime, I feel like she comments the same way. You know what I mean? Yeah, like what the fuck are you kidding? Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. So I watched that and then actually I went in my room and I tend to turn on the TV I was watching the movie Bad Teacher with Cameron Diaz. Have you ever seen that movie? It's on Hulu now. Oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny. Okay. So the year was 1871 and the city of Brighton was being afflicted by a series of mysterious poisonings. Jesus Christ, what the actual F is up with in that day and age? Poison was the way to go. Probably because you could get it. Like, you can't fucking go into a store and say, oh, I want some cyanide. No, that's not how that works. Um, but they could go into, like, the pharmacy and get arsenic. That was, like, the fucking number one poison, apparently. Um, you could go in there and get that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Mysterious poisonings. Several people had received treats. <laughs> If I received a strange box of candy in the mail, I don't think I'd be fucking eating it. Just saying. Several people had received treats anonymously in the mail, sampled them, and almost instantly fallen ill. Others had bought candy from a local chocolatier, J.G. Maynard, with the same result. A bout of stomach cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea. Still, no one suspected anything sinister. Why? Someone's obviously fucking poisoning this candy, you people. Let's stop being so freaking dumb. <laughs> Come on, give me a break now. Like, wouldn't you think, oh, 10 people have bought candy from my store and they're falling ill now. Is it a disgruntled employee? That's what I'm thinking. This was an era during which food safety regulations were nowhere near as stringent as they are today when the occasional bout of food poisoning was a fact of life. Fuck. Yeah, 1871 is much different now than 2021. Are you kidding me right now? But, I don't, yeah, can you imagine living in 1871? Like, you would probably be, there are so many things that you would be used to. Yeah. Can't imagine it. Okay. So nobody appeared to pay the issue much attention until someone died. Because, yeah, death is probably going to be like a hard stop, right? Yeah. The victim of the tragedy was a four-year-old boy named Sidney Barker, who was at that time paying a visit to his uncle in Brighton. As a treat, his uncle had taken him to J.G. Maynard's and bought him a box of chocolate creams. Oh my God, my favorite, like really good chocolate candy. Like if you're buying like gourmet candy, I like sea salt caramels and also like vanilla buttercream. <gasps> C's candy, S-E-E, 
They're freaking fantastic. And of course, in Ocean City, like Wackenfuss and stuff. Yeah, I give that stuff a wide berth now. I don't eat that, but someday maybe. Okay, so both the uncle and the boy had eaten some of the candy and both had become ill. The uncle had eventually recovered and little Sydney had not. Because let's think about it. Wait, the uncle probably outweighed him by 200 pounds or 150 pounds. So his body was able to process the poison. Poor little four-year-old Sydney, his tiny little body couldn't handle that. Now, finally, with the death of a child, the authorities paid attention. Am I done the A? I think I am. Don't you love it? Nope. Oh, thank God I looked. Here's one way over here, and here's another one. Don't you love it when you put the diamonds back in the container, and then you see a symbol? You're like, motherfucker. <laughs> At least that's what I say. Oh, yes. You know me. I'm Cussie McCusserson. <laughs> oh, I'm in rare form today. Today is a good day to have a good day, right? Yeah. All right. Let's get my next color. We're going to do nine since I've consistently been looking at that symbol. Another blue one. Okay. A coroner's inquiry was convened and several people came forward to testify that they too had become ill after eating candy purchased from Maynard's. One of those who took the stand was a tall, attractive spinster named Christiana Edmonds, who described her debilitating symptoms in detail. Okay, however, she's the fucking name of the story. So, hmm. Then John Maynard, the owner of the store was called and swore under oath that he had nothing to do with the poison his customers had ingested. Poor guy. Your business is dying, literally. <laughs> that was awful. <gasps> ah! Okay. Attention then turned to the candy store itself. Several items were taken from the shelves and sent for testing, and a number of these showed traces of strychnine. Now, did John Maynard make his own candy? I'm guessing in 1871, if you had a candy store, you might have made your own candy, right? That's going to be the question. It says, but how had the deadly poison ended up in the chocolates? And that was a question no one could answer. And since no evidence had been offered to the contrary, the verdict was that Sidney Barker had been the victim of a tragic accident. So John Maynard was off the hook, but his business suffered a significant drop in customers. Yeah, no shit. You would not be going to buy candy from someone who had, from a place where someone had died eating the candy. What John should have done was probably just disposed of all of the chocolate that was currently in the store and then got new, maybe? So, with the inquest concluded and the public set at ease, life got back to normal in Brighton. But that normality did not last long. Within weeks, people started falling ill again, six of them during one incident in August 1871. On this occasion, the victims had each received a plum cake. What the fuck is a plum cake? Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my finger on it. Well, no, it's going to tell me what plum is. I'm guessing it's made from plums. Does someone know what a plum cake is? Let me know. So the victims had each received a plum cake via the mail and had started throwing up after eating it. So among those afflicted was the editor of the local newspaper. Another was a doctor's wife, Mrs. Emily Beard. Yet another was Christiana Edmonds, who had recently testified at the coroner's inquiry. So she's been affected twice. Wouldn't this be strange? Right? Is she eating her own concoctions to kind of throw people off the scent? I don't know. It's so strange, right? It was at this point in the saga that the case took a dramatic turn. The day after his wife fell ill, Dr. Arthur Beard walked into a local police station and said that he had information to share on the poisonings. What? 
According to him, they were not accidental at all. They had been carried out by his neighbor, Christiana Edmonds. In order to back up his claim, wow, this story is extremely long. In order to back up his claim, Dr. Beard handed over a stack of letters, all of them written to him by Miss Edmonds. Oh, Lordy. According to Dr. Beard, Christiana was obsessed with him. It had all started innocently enough a year earlier when she had started flirting with him, and he, flattered by the attention of a beautiful woman, had flirted back because men can't fucking resist. Keep it in your goddamn pants, right? No. Ego. The male ego. How to keep your man happy? Food? Sex? Praise. Right? Yeah. You keep a man's ego inflated? Yeah. Right. Then she had started writing passionate letters to him, and he had responded in kind. What the actual fuck, Dr. Beard? Come on, now. However, he had later decided to end the flirtation and had told Christiana that it was over and that she was not to write to him or contact him ever again. Hmm. Let me guess. This is not going to go over well for Christiana. She probably thinks she's in love with the doctor. But Christiana had totally ignored this request and had continued as though nothing had happened. Mm. The letters kept arriving as many as three a week, declaring her undying love. And she had also started calling their home. Holy moly. Then one day, in September 1870, she arrived with a gift of chocolate creams for the doctor's wife. And Mrs. Beard had fallen ill shortly after eating one of the candies. I'm guessing in 1871 that it was not weird to bring your neighbors candy. People were probably very hospitable in those days. Hmm. So Dr. Beard was convinced, right? Avi, that Christiana had deliberately poisoned his wife. However, when he confronted her, she robustly denied it, arguing that she too had eaten a chocolate from the box and had become ill as a result. Would she have done so if she'd known that they were contaminated? Maybe. Have you guys seen the movie Basic Instinct? Sharon Stone's character. All these people start dying in the manner that she has written in her novels. And when she is in the police inquest, she says, Now wouldn't it be pretty stupid of me to write a book and then go and kill a person in the same way that I wrote about in my book? Maybe. But maybe not. Maybe that's your, yeah. So Dr. Beer decided, well, perhaps she wouldn't have eaten it if she known it was contaminated. Still, he warned Christiana to stay away from him and his family. It was a short while later that the spate of poisonings had started in Brighton. So it's too coincidental though, right? So Christiana was arrested and charged with the attempted murder of Emily Beard. At the subsequent inquest to determine whether there was sufficient evidence for a prosecution, she appeared dressed to the nines in a black silk dress. She looked as though she were attending a gala rather than a criminal proceeding, and her nonchalant and aloof demeanor hardly helped her cause. I think, you know, if you watch court cases, like, they always tell people to dress like the most conservative that you can, right? Yeah, which only makes sense because you really don't want to draw attention to yourself if you're being tried for murder, I would guess. So, the evidence didn't help her cause either. A local chemist testified that she had bought strychnine from him on a number of occasions, each time claiming that she needed it to poison stray cats. She had signed the poisons register as Mrs. Wood. Things got even worse for Christiana when a local boy told the court that she would often send him to buy chocolates from Maynard's. Later, she would ask him to return them, saying they were the wrong kind. Oh, my God! So that explains, first of all, who the fuck is returning chocolates? Who accepts return chocolates? So, but she must open the box, poison the candy, and then call the boy back and return it. And so that's how all of these candies are getting on the shelves. Oh, my friggin' God. So the implication was clear. Christiana had laced the chocolates with strychnine while they were in her possession and had then returned them to Maynard's to be put back on the shelves. 
So that put her in the frame for the murder of Sidney Barker now. She entered the courtroom suspected of attempted murder and she left it in shackles charged with the ultimate crime and if found guilty, she was likely to be hung because that's what they did back in 1871. They didn't fucking play. You got hung. Yeah. So by now, it was clear that this case was too big for the sleepy seaside resort of Brighton because you're not finding no impartial juror in that town. Not only was there considerable ill feeling toward Christiana in the town, but the na national dailies had picked up on the story, elevating it from local tragedy to media sensation. Good night. As a result, it was decided to move proceedings to London's famed Old Bailey. So Christiana appeared there in January of 1872, and as before, she arrived dressed to impress, this time wearing a black velvet number with fur trim. The actual fuck. <laughs> okay now so the case against christiana appeared overwhelming leaving her defense with just two straws to clutch at the first of those was motive what possible reason could she have for murdering a complete stranger and a child at that right can't wait to hear what this explanation is let's do these nines down here Unfortunately for Christiana, this argument was easily countered by the prosecution. It offered that Christiana had done it to get back into the good graces of Dr. Beard. What? According to this hypothesis, Christiana had failed in her first attempt to kill Emily Beard and had then embarked on her poisoning spree to cover her tracks. If the poisonings were shown to be widespread, then she would be off the hook with the doctor. Alternatively, the prosecutor offered... She may have been experimenting, trying to find a reliable toxin and dosage before making another attempt on Mrs. Beard's life. Hmm, that was probably more the case. Either way, there was sufficient motive there if one chose to look. So, with this line of defense blown out of the water, Christiana's lawyer resorted to his fallback position. He declared that his client was suffering from mental illness and was incapable of differentiating between right and wrong. And in order to back up this claim, he called Christiana's mother, Ann Edmonds, to the stand. Hmm. And it was soon clear that this was no mere flight of fancy. So Ann testified that there was a history of insanity on both sides of the family. Christiana's father had been committed to an asylum before his death. So, too, had Christiana's older brother while her sister had committed suicide. Jesus! What the hell? Anne conceded that her daughter was vain and self-obsessed, but said that it was these very qualities that had pushed her over the edge after Dr. Beard rejected her. In his later summation, Christiana's lawyer would state that despite the doctor's denials on the stand, the relationship went beyond flirting and letter writing that it had been physical. Mmm... He suggested that Dr. Beard had taken advantage of a mentally unstable woman and left her devastated by his abandonment. Maybe. Maybe. It was a compelling argument, but one that was lost on the jurors. After retiring for just a short while, they returned to declare Christiana guilty. The judge then donned the black cap and sentenced her to hang. Christiana's next action would be one that would grab all the headlines the next day. As she was being led away, she blurted out that she was pregnant with Dr. Beard's child and that her sentence could therefore not be carried out. So if you were pregnant, you couldn't be hung because it would kill the child also. Interesting. That dramatic declaration would turn out to be false. Oh, Why did she think that was going to, like they wouldn't do a pregnancy test? What kind of pregnancy test was in 1871? They didn't have like clear blue easy. So what did they have? They probably had an examination. Uh, ugh. However, there were other matters to be attended to before an execution date could be set. One of those was an examination to determine the competency of the condemned. This was performed by Dr. William Orange, medical supervisor of Broadmoor, Britain's best known institution for the criminally insane. Dr. Orange's report was unequivocal. Christiana was not fit to be executed since she suffered from confused and perverted feelings of a most marked insane character. You can fake insanity, I think. 
right? We've seen movies on it. He recommended that the sentence be commuted to life in prison to be served under the supervision of his staff at Broadmoor and the Home Secretary ordered its cell. So she got saved from the hanging. So Christiana arrived at Broadmoor in 1872 when she was 43 years old. She remained there until she died 35 years later, so she was 78, on September 19, 1907. During that tenure, she would become one of the institution's most colorful characters. Right up until her death at age 78, she remained obsessed with her appearance. She would wear an elaborate wig and blush and would flirt outrageously with any male member of staff who she had contact with. Her attitude towards her fellow inmates was somewhat different, however. She appeared adept at determining, determining each individual's personal push point and would work at them until she got them to throw a tantrum or break down into a fit of sobbing. Wow, that must have been a pleasant place to be. So this behavior suggests that Christiana might have been afflicted by psychopathy in addition to her other mental issues. It would certainly explain her attitude to the crime she committed because through all her years at Broadmoor, she had never once expressed remorse for taking the life of an innocent child. Oy, that was a good one though, wasn't it? Poison candy. That seems to be the fucking trend back then. Remember the one we read where the person was wanted to be with the husband and she was poisoning the candy and the whole family got fucking sick and like three members died or something? Yeah. Wow, the next one's an old one too. Let's go. Yeah. But we're going to save that for tomorrow's story. Okay. So we always end with a positive affirmation from A Year of Positive Thinking by Cindy Spiegel. And today is Wednesday, July 14th. We are halfway through July. Summer is going right through. Okay. Boundaries are healthy. This one's called. Healthy boundaries teach people how to treat you. Respect what you need and trust your intuition. Don't be afraid to share your boundaries with others instead of closing yourself off. By nurturing healthy relationships, they become more functional, loving, and supportive for each person. Yeah, you know, you need to have boundaries for sure. Um, I think I have finally kind of, you know, gotten through to Bill about how I really feel about parties and like swimming. I mean, things that he really likes and that I have endured because when you're married, you pick your battles. But I don't think he really knew until just a little while ago that I really felt like because I didn't like that stuff, because who doesn't like summer? Who doesn't like swimming? Who doesn't? Because I, I really felt like something was wrong with me. And when I said that to him, I think he finally got it that you know, there is nothing wrong with me because I don't like those things. It's just a personal preference. Just like the people that do like it, there's nothing wrong with them. So you know what I mean? So yeah, have your boundaries. Stand your ground on what you like and you don't like. And if you at all possible, you know, do not let people persuade you. I mean, that's easier said than done, of course, to stand, to be the cheese that stands alone, to stand by your convictions and who you are and to be yourself. Because... There are times where I do, I feel like a weirdo or like, I don't know, you know, like you just feel not like a normal person, but you know what? Just like on um, Wednesday, Adam says, you know, I think in one of the Adams family movies, he tells them to watch out for weirdos. And she said, we are the weirdos, mister. <laughs> We are the weirdos, right? Um, I will gladly wear that hat and take that status any day of the week because, yeah, I'm a pretty awesome person, right? And so are you guys. Um, I feel like those who craft and read and, you know, I'm so thankful for all of those crafts. I'm so thankful I am that kind of person that does those things because what the hell would my life be like if I did not? Okay, enough jibby jabbing. I hope you guys all enjoy your Wednesday. As always, if you have any questions, 
please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.